Hi, Peter. Hi. Um, thank you for taking the time to join this interview. My pleasure. So, firstly, what's your view on global ocean race? Yeah, I think, you know, at the end of the day, uh, our outlook always starts with rates. And rates are the foundation for pretty much every other market in our view, in, in including risky corporate credit as well as uh, equities, both in the U.S., Europe, and the rest of the world. So uh, thank you for that question. I think, I think it makes an awful lot of sense to talk about that. So our, our view coming into this year was for uh, an inverted U.S. yield curve with rates also lower across the curve. And one of the reasons why we thought that that was going to happen is because rates in the rest of the world are so low, and in fact so much lower than they are uh, in the U.S. So when you have negatively yielding debt in Europe and in Japan, it's very difficult for rates here uh, to rise precipitously because what happens is, is, a, is an investor in Europe will ask themselves the question, on a currency hedged basis, would I rather own treasuries or would I rather own bunds, which is the 10-year German bond? Would I rather own treasuries, 10-year treasury, or would I rather own 10-year JGB? And at the end of the day, that helps to anchor the long end of the U.S. curve especially in the absence of growth and inflation, which we really haven't had a lot of. So our view is for lower rates, inverted yield curve, and frankly, we're, we're predicting more of the same. We're predicting uh, long rates here in the United States, that is the 10-year, we're, we're predicting a 10-year be at about a one and a quarter over the next six months as economic activity continues to slow. And because of our somewhat uh, less than sanguine outlook for the economics, uh, for, e for the economy in the U.S., we're predicting lower rates on the short end as well. So a uh, a certainly a lower and flattish curve going into 2020. Thank you for the insight. Sure. So, next, what's your view on U.S. equity? Yeah, so that's that's another another good good uh, good question on a follow to rates. Um, one of the reasons why we think rates are going to be lower uh, is because we think there's an eco economic slowdown afoot in the United States. Uh, and that economic slowdown in the United States uh, is also likely to be accompanied by lower equity markets. At some point in time, fundamentals are going to start to matter again to U.S. equity. So we had a, a narrative this year for uh, two halves. We, had, uh, we called it the tale of two halves for the year. And uh, our tale of the first half was for higher equity. So in December on the equity market sell-off, we said, look, we, we think equities have gone uh, have gone too far too fast to the downside. We like buying the S&P 500 at 2400. I thought the rally would start to peter out around 2900. So we've, we've been a little bit cautious since 2900 and, and so arguably on the wrong side of the market for uh, 150 points or so. But I think all the conditions precedent to a bearish call for U.S. equities into the second half are still there. The yield curve being one of them. That actually uh, not only indicates recession, but helps cause it, because when a curve is inverted, banks tend to lend less aggressively to consumers, and the data continues to roll over, both globally as well as in the U.S. So our call remains bearish for the second half uh, on U.S. equities. Um, we have a target of 2650 on the S&P 500. Thank you. So lastly, how do you envision the trade war playing out? Yeah, so that I think that impacts both of the of the two of the two calls that we just discussed, and the trade war isn't everything. It's an important piece of the global slowdown. But one of the things we very much fundamentally disagree with is this idea that the trade war caused the slowdown. It didn't cause the slowdown. We think it accelerated, it pulled it forward, but it certainly did not cause it. The slowdown, by our mind, was afoot probably as early as I don't know, late 2017. We started to see ISMs globally roll over. Um, and so while a trade war resolution will help global growth, it's not going to prevent recession here in the U.S., nor will it help uh, or nor will it um, prevent uh, the slowdown that's already afoot globally. So in terms of a resolution, uh, we think uh, a phase one deal uh, is likely to happen. Uh, and the reason for that is, is it has to happen as part of the narrative that, a white, the narrative that the White House is crafting into the election. So. It will paint a picture that progress is being made, that the U.S. is winning. Uh, but in reality, especially if we have to concede and roll back tariffs, the U.S. is actually losing. And so we think the markets are misperceiving, number one, the likelihood of any kind of a deal. Number two, uh, the benefit of whatever form the deal takes to the U.S. So again, we see a rollback in existing tariffs. That's not a good outcome for the United States. Uh, the issues are very complicated. Any kind of a comprehensive deal would likely take 
years, uh, in addition to the year and a half we've already seen, to fully negotiate. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for sharing. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.